There are more new revelations this hour from Prince Harry ahead of the release tomorrow of his memoir, Spare. Last hour, he was interviewed on Good Morning America, which is the ABC morning show on uh, the American network. And one of the things he told interviewer Michael Strahan was his thoughts on how his mother would feel about his now very difficult relationship with his brother, Prince William. He would be heartbroken that it's ended up where it's ended up. I think she'd be heartbroken about the fact that William, his office, were part of these stories. And William and I made a, made a pact, made a deal that no matter what, we would never let our offices fight against each other. Each other. You think he broke that pact? Yes, no, his, the people that he employed broke that pact. As I mentioned, the official release is tomorrow, but many of the details have already been leaked, and Garrett was reporting on some of those earlier in the hour, the details of that physical fight with his brother, Prince William, his time as an Apache helicopter captain in Afghanistan during the war there, his relationship with other royals following his mother's death, his relationship with Camilla, Queen Consort now, for example. Let's bring in the perspective of someone you know well on all of these matters, Katie Nichols with me this morning, royal commentator for Vanity Fair, the author of The New Royals, Queen Elizabeth's Legacy and the Future of the Crown. She's in London today, and I'm always happy to spend some time with Katie. So good morning and welcome back. Hello, Heather. So much to talk about with you today. Let's talk about totality, first of all. We've got that new Good Morning America interview, the latest in a series of interviews. And when you put that together with the leaked details from Spare, Overall, what are you learning about Prince Harry right now, Katie? I think a deeply difficult relationship with his brother that goes back way before any of us ever realized there were real problems, issues, rivalry, competition, feeling like a spare, like a spare part, like an accessory. I mean, that comes through over so many of the pages of spare, this feeling that he never fitted in, that he that he always felt like an outsider. Um, I'm, I don't necessarily think it's the, the image I saw of Harry and William. I spent a lot of time on the road with them um, when obviously they were very much part of a team before both of them were married. Um, I went to Africa with them in 2010 and remember writing a big piece in the Mail on Sunday at the time saying, Team Wales, you know, what a brilliant dynamic these two young men were, what an asset to the royal family. And at that point, Heather, the idea that this bond between these two brothers would ever be broken, let alone ruptured to the extent we see today, it was, it was unthinkable. So that aspect obviously new to you. As you've looked at, again, all of these details that we have so far, what is the most interesting or perhaps the most unexpected specific part of all of this? Just think the the breakdown in the familial relationships just strikes me as as the, the sort of the hardest hitting thing in all of this. And and Harry's struggle within an institution that he so clearly resents, I think, no longer respects. He does actually say he 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 believes in the monarchy, and yet he seems intent on on damaging it because this really is damaging the monarchy. I mean, he's lifted the lid. He's gone to places that no one has ever gone to before him. And I think in doing so has really just busted that myth of mystique that the late Queen Elizabeth did so much to preserve around the monarchy. I mean, it's reduced to a sort of squabbling real life soap opera that we're all pouring over. So you've just raised something that I've been wondering about. We've already heard him talk this morning about what he thinks his mother would have thought of his relationship now with his brother. But, I mean, have you let yourself go to what the Queen would have thought about all of this? Had she been still alive? Well, I, I spent many hours with Lady Elizabeth Anson, the late Lady Elizabeth Anson, the Queen's cousin, and I, I asked her exactly that, and it's in my book. She said that the Queen was privately devastated and deeply hurt, not just by Harry leaving the royal family and standing down, something she could never really understand, but how the relationship with William broke down as well. I think it caused a great deal of stress and upset in her later life and a source of sadness that they were never reconciled, at least not until her funeral. And now we know from, from the excerpts that we've seen that that reconciliation at the funeral was all for the cameras. In fact, I think you and I, Heather, stood there talking about how genuine that reconciliation felt. You could see 
there was no closeness between Meghan and Harry, William and Kate. And in the interview with Tom Bradbury last night, he, he spoke about that concept of the Fab Four, how much he'd wanted them all to get along. But he felt that William and Kate never welcomed Meghan into the royal family. I think William and Kate would say very differently. They would definitely say otherwise. But this is obviously Harry's story, his narrative which he's making uh, alone, interestingly, doing all of these interviews without Meghan at his side. I've been hearing some other media outlets talk about what they're hearing from palace insiders in terms of reaction, and Prince William apparently is particularly furious at these revelations and disclosures. From your sources, Katie, are you getting a read on how Buckingham Palace is feeling? We haven't had any official response, but what the reaction is inside the royal family to all of this? Yeah, I mean, I've just actually written a piece, Heather, that's just gone live on Vanity Fair about the reaction. I have to say that the palace are staying very, very quiet on this. We reached out again this morning. It is a strict no comment. And there aren't really any briefings coming out of the palace. The, the sense is they are just riding this out. I was told that they are going to just let Harry burn himself out. They know that at some point he's going to run out of things to say and they, they think that moment is, is coming quite close. I think Camilla's feeling quite bruised. It's, it's been difficult reading um, for her. She seems to have come under particular attack. Um, astonished is, is the word that was used by a contact close to the Queen consort to me. William, yes, devastated. I mean, he's lost his brother in all of this. And I think one of the saddest tales in Spare is how William tries to address Harry at that funeral of Prince Philip, tries to speak to him. And you can see there is just no understanding. These brothers are absolute loggerheads. On this question of reconciliation, again, he comes back to that in the Good Morning America interview today. Uh, watching the 60 Minutes interview last night, he acknowledged he hasn't spoken to his father or his brother in some time, but still indicates he wants a reconciliation and thinks it's possible with some sort of a private conversation, candid private conversation. What do you think the likelihood of this is and if there, how it would even occur at all at this point? Well, it's a great question because private conversation with Harry does seem to be something of an oxymoron. All of these conversations are played out so publicly. Details of intimate conversations that took place at Prince Philip's funeral splashed all over his book. I know that there is a genuine fear and paranoia amongst Charles and William that anything they do say is just going to be played out in the media. So I think it's a case of Harry really Actually, if what he wants is a genuine reconciliation and he seems pretty sure that it's going to happen, he's really going to need to earn some of that trust back. And at the moment, there is simply no trust, which I think means a reconciliation is some way off. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. That said, Heather, it does have to happen. You cannot have this rift, this rivalry, this war of words across the Atlantic playing out on the eve of the most important event in Charles's life, the coronation in May. Exactly. And of course, we don't know what role, if any, he will have in this. This was part of the discussion. Hold up. What Show, show us what came to your doorstep just before starting our conversation, just, Katie. I know what you're going to be reading today. You and I, just before you and I went live, I, I was is. waiting for a career. I've been waiting all morning. My Spanish isn't fluent, so en la sombra wasn't going to help me very much. Of course, I've read <laughs> all the excerpts. But I think context is so important. So I have my reading glasses. I have my copy of Spare, and I'm going to be speed reading this. My and um, I think we'll we see. all feel we've read and seen enough, but I think it's very important to read every word of it. So there will likely be much more in that. It'll be interesting to get your further perspective. Thank you for this morning. Happy reading, and uh, really nice to see you uh, to begin 2023. Thank you, Katie Nichol. Thank you, Heather.